copyright disclaimer under the section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, allowances made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by a copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing nonprofit educational or personal use tips to balance in favor of fair use. Salam alaikum. Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. So who did they call? 911. Let me ask you something, family. <laughs> that is exactly. Rabia says, let them be black. Exactly. If it was black people, that would never happen. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Perception is everything. Rabia said it before I before I even said it. If you are three, there's three of you, and you're talking about a man and a woman, and the first thing that you do is call 911 at a masjid. What you are telling the enemy is that you do not have the wherewithal to fight for yourself. And the enemy sees that. You know white supremacists? They hate Muslims as much as they hate Jews. They probably even hate Jews more. But you don't find Jewish women like what's happening in Edmonton on the street getting attacked, beat up, tore up. Why is that? Why do you think that is? Because they know and they understand that if you attack a Jewish woman, there's going to be repercussions. They know this. What you are telling them by these soft, effeminate actions, there's three of you and a man versus a man and a woman, and you felt afraid? You felt afraid? Now, when I first saw these two intruders for the first time at IIT, my initial impressions of them were, these guys got to be crackies. Now, I want you to listen to this. It happened just before noon on Tuesday. Toronto police arrested both a man and a woman. Police say it's believed that both were under the influence of illicit drugs. And they say at this point, there isn't evidence to suggest it's a hate-motivated incident. But the hate crime unit has been notified. Now, I'm going to go on a bit of a rant here. So please forgive me in advance. But did you hear how the news reporter said that there's illicit drugs involved i.e. these people are crackies family who on planet earth is afraid of a cracky crackies get beat up by everybody they get beat up by their parents their siblings their their uh aunts uncles their friends their boyfriends girlfriends their drug dealers they literally the whole world beats up crackies because they're always stealing, lying, cheating. Nobody is afraid of a cracky. But somehow, these Muslims thought it would be a great idea to express their fear of this little man and his woman. And on top of that, they happen to be drug addicts. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, there's so much to unpack here. And I don't want this rant to be too long. But it shows, first of all, that you don't know anything about your community because you're obviously not making dawah otherwise you would recognize that cracky when you see one just like i did <laughs> you know what i mean you know imam suraj wahaj he's been making dawah in new york for such a long time do you know how many uh drug dealers and drug addicts he made dawah to and they became muslim in that community and they left those that life but the point is that he was always out there his community is always out there making making dawah and they know the people they know the people you don't know the people and on top of that you're expressing your fear of the most lowly people on earth okay that nobody's afraid of and on top of that you're demanding conferences and stuff for for uh, islamophobia and crap like, you look crazy, man. I'm sorry to say that. In my opinion, I don't know the, all the facts of the case, obviously. But if I had to guess, I'd be guessing that those two crackies were there at that message to steal. And 
they did the old uh, finger in the sweater sweater trick, pretending they had a gun and you got scared. The only people on earth afraid of crackies. That's totally embarrassing and absolutely unacceptable, especially I don't understand how you thought it was a good idea to express this on TV, but it absolutely wasn't. They should be afraid of you. That's why they do this. That's why they can, that's why these white supremacists have no fear against you Muslims. You don't give them anything to fear. What you do, you, you have your, your so-called Islamic organizations in front of the media talking about, we need to end white supremacy. That's the only repercussions you got? That's the only repercussions you get? I'm gonna continue reading. As I was on the phone with 911, my partner Riyadh approached him in his car where the male informed him that they were there to detonate a bomb. They were there to detonate a bomb, at which point he retreated. He retreated, okay? He retreated, I repeat, he retreated and informed me. The individuals continued to circle the parking lot and shouting profanities and threats. Are, if these are the people that are protecting Muslim women, then no wonder Muslim women get beat up in the streets of Edmonton. No wonder the messages get vandalized. This is, this is who, who are, these are the people protecting your mess, message? These people? Somebody put in the chat, black people don't do that. Somebody please put that in the chat, black people don't do that. And Muslims should never, ever, ever do that for either. The first thing a Muslim should do is take care of their business, then call the police after when everything's said and done. Because if you don't, those people will be back over and over and over and over again. And that's exactly what happens. I remember what way back in the day, there were these young teenagers who used to bother my sister. Bother her because she was outside with her um, abaya and uh, hijab. I remember this clearly. They were bothering my sister. You think I thought to call the police? No, I didn't. When my sister came in and she told me what was happening to her, the next day, I said, okay, when you, when you go out uh, tomorrow, whatever, I'm gonna be back here, right? And we're gonna see if we see them. They came. I handled that right then and there by myself. You think those, those, um, those teenagers bothered my sister after that? Thank you. Black people don't do that. But again, y'all think, see, it's, it's mind boggling. Okay. It's absolutely mind boggling. The brothers from the East, the brothers and sisters from the East. Okay. The enemy is the one who messed up your countries to begin with. Correct. So y'all got here the day before you feel me yesterday. You got refugee status and today you're demanding an end to Islamophobia. You know how crazy you look, you look crazy. You're giving white supremacists ammunition. You look nuts. You just left your countries to come here in the West to demand the enemy puts an end to Islamophobia. And you look nuts. That's not how things are done in the West. You know, ridiculous. You're right, brother. It is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. You give them ammunition. What is the first thing they start saying? Well, if you don't like it here, go back to your own country, right? That's, what, that's the first thing they say. Because you saw some black people protesting on TV. Now you think that's how we do things here in the West, if you want rights. So you piggyback off of the, the black struggle and, th and make your own thing while ignoring the black struggle at the same time. And it's not fitting. It's not matching. And the, the enemy is looking at you like food. That's why they attack you and not Jews. Because you look like food. Who does this? Three men, one man, one female. The first thing you do is call 911 and you tell the world that you're, you say it to the world. I was scared. Well, I, I saw a video uh, last year, some, some mosque in, in Calgary, okay? Some man was in there with a knife, okay? The knife was no bigger than this. He was in what they call the men's section. This was during, he was in what they call the men's section. You know what these men did? It was on a Juma, on a Yomul Juma. Did they subdue him? No. 
They try to tackle him, talk him down? No. These people called the police. One was a woman in the so-called men's section with their boots on. And they shot that guy. The police shot that guy with a rubber bullet inside the masjid. We're talking about one man, one, okay? One man with a knife no bigger than this, maybe a maximum, maximum five inch blade. It looked like a sharp butter knife, but he looked like he was mentally ill anyways. <laughs> Now, I got to ask you this something. If this situation was so serious that you had to call the cops, then why is this imam still giving the khutbah there? When I first saw this video, I really wanted to make a video at that time, but I didn't want to embarrass the brothers in that masjid. You know, but since y'all are seem to be embarrassing us <laughs> like on a weekly basis now i'm sorry i have to say something i'm bringing this up right now Now, when I first got these clips way back, at that time, I was seriously considering doing a video about this because allegedly in the men's section of that masjid, there were allegedly men in it. I saw with my eyes what looked like men. It looked like it was the men's section and it looked like those were allegedly men. And those men, and as I look at the clip right now, I can see it's not a, a five inch blade. It's more like a three or four inch blade. All those men, all those alleged men couldn't uh, subdue that one small little dude with a rinky dink knife. And the Imam just given a chuppah. So they called the cops to come into the, the alleged men's section of a masjid with their shoes so that they can shoot this guy with a rubber bullet. You know, besides those men police officers, in my humble opinion, the female cops, if you were to extract the, the, the male officers, those female cops had more testicular fortitude than all the men combined in that masjid, if they were men. Listen to this guy. Is anybody hurt? Yeah, the guy who just got shot is hurt. Clear the mission. Y'all are so ridiculous, man. You know how weak and ridiculous you look. Even I was, I was talking, I was wondering, is this the men's section or women's section in this masjid? Maybe there's some ugly woman in that masjid. That's what I was thinking in my head. Like, who does that? There's so many men. You you couldn't subdue them, tackle them, nothing. You're not afraid. You have to call the police. You look like food. The female saw us on the phone and told us that she would shoot us. <laughs> Can you, are you hearing this? The female saw us on the phone. She told us she would shoot us and then began to approach us. At that point, thankful the police arrived. Aw. 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 The police came and saved you from a man and a woman. Three of y'all. Saying they're going to blow up the masjid with their guns. Aw. <laughs> At that point, thankfully, the police arrived and cut her off. The individuals were arrested, alhamdulillah, and no one was harmed. Oh, that's the problem. That's, that is the problem. Remember what I said in the beginning. 
that the highest form of warfare is that you don't fight. How are you calling the enemy's police and then saying Alhamdulillah at the same time? You know why? It's because you don't perceive them as enemies. You don't. You just, you just don't. And for the Eastern brothers and sisters, well, mostly the brothers anyways, this behavior that you're doing is putting all the Muslims in danger. Black people don't do that. Like, subscribe, share. Don't worry, we're getting real deep now, man. We're getting really deep. So that's just your regular Muslims. They allow the police to come in their message for, for little dudes with, with a knife. They allow people to beat them up on the streets and scream like girls. I saw, I saw one uh, like two weeks ago. Man, uh, a man and his son, okay? One of them, the, the father got punched in his face and the son starts crying like a girl publicly. And he's, he's not like a little kid. He's a grown man. You know what I mean? He's like, ah! His father got punched in the face. He, he didn't fight, throw a punch, nothing. A father and son pummeled in a Queens neighborhood moments after this seemingly minor car crash. This is an accident. Accidents do happen. Calm down. I'll give you whatever you need to, to get. He said, okay, pay me up now. I need money right there. But Mohi Ahmed did not have the $1,000 the man was demanding for repairs. And he said that I'm going to kill him now. Then I said, no, you are not touching my son. And then immediately he hit me. One right hook. Mohi's son, Adele, watched his father fall to the ground here on 70th Street. And then I've never seen my dad knocked out in, and put in such a humiliating way like this. Never. You know, and I just did the loudest yell that I could possibly do. I just like, it was so loud, but I wanted to cry, I couldn't. Family, these are your Muslim woman's future husbands. Imagine that he, this is his father and he's telling on TV, I scream as loud as I can. I want to cry, but I cannot cry, I scream. So after he did his whole, the old, the very old classic scream like a bitch de defense, which usually does not work, he bragged about it on TV. But some of y'all, you might think that I'm being a little bit harsh or, or overly sensitive. And I'm, no, I'm not. No, you think I'm making this stuff up. Listen to what these kufar said about this. I need bread. Go in your pocket, stop digging. This road rage KO teaches us the perils of a victim mindset. This guy is looking for a fight, we can say. That's why he's come out reacting so wildly to his car being knocked. Yeah. But the interesting thing about this video is if you watch it, well, you'll actually see that the bad guy is getting more and more aggressive as it goes along. So he starts off, he's angry, but then he gets angrier and angrier and angrier. So he's becoming more empowered. Yeah. These individuals, they actually failed to pick up those signs straight away, which is a problem. Equally, it looks like to me, the fuel is being added by these guys' submissive mindset and behavior that yeah. this guy's like, right, I can just be as aggressive as I want. They're not providing him any obs obstacles or obstruction at all. A father and son pummeled in a Queens neighborhood moments after this seemingly minor car crash. I need bread. Go in your pocket, stop digging. The man in the yellow sweatshirt is livid. The driver's upset that his car's been hit. He's demanding money for his damage to his car. You know, he's clearly not acting in a reasonable way in his like screaming and demanding money and hitting his pocket. He, he's out of, let's call it out of control. The disproportionate response for me that's really alarming is the way the victim is hands in pockets staying as placid as, as he possibly can be but this is the point i was saying and i've said it in many videos before what tends to happen is if you have an aggressor who's very angry and antagonized your further submissiveness and being submissive with your body language only further empowers them you shouldn't present a submissive form of body language if you do do that then what it does as i said is it will escalate and further empower the person that's being aggressive towards you. And he said that I'm going to kill him now. This is a good example where language reflects behavior. Yeah. Because sometimes people actually say things 
and they say what they mean to do subconsciously or say what they are thinking mm. out loud and then they will actually enact it and that's a that's a cue to look for that's a definite cue to look for so the victims here missed that the guy actually said i'm going to kill you now and they didn't take action even defensive action being stepping back making space walking behind their car then I said, no, you are not touching my son, and then immediately he hit me. One right hook. Mohi's son, Adele, watched his father fall to the ground here on 70th Street. And then I've never seen my dad knocked out in, and put in such a humiliating way like this. Never. You know, and I just did the loudest yell that I could possibly do. I just, like, it was so loud, but I wanted to cry, I couldn't. His reaction is, is quite significant, and I think this is a point to take in on board. He screeches out in panic. <laughs> My man described as scream like a bitch defense as screeches. Family, I want you to understand something. I know sometimes I can be a little bit harsh, but when I'm criticizing people, I'm not criticizing y'all just for the sake of doing it. These are Kufar saying it. So you can hear it from your Muslim brother, or you can be embarrassed by the kufar. Listen to what he was saying. The big mistake was the people with their hands in their pocket. They didn't pick up on the body language. They didn't get uh, in a, any defensive position. They their, their very submissive nature caused all this to happen. Do you see a pattern? All this submissive talk like honestly before y'all start talking in front of the news about islamophobia and all this kind of stuff maybe you should take two or three steps back before you get on media and start saying this stuff because like i said the same news that we're watching is the same news the kufar are watching and now you have kufar talking about you it's totally inappropriate and embarrassing and you should actually be embarrassed Sorry for the harshness, but it's real. He just sat there and cried like, you can't do that here. You can't do that here. And you, 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 by your actions, you put all of us in danger by doing that. Because now, like I said, black people don't do that. Ask my sister. Ask my sister what happened when those teenagers tried to mess with her. We don't do that. But now if my wife or my daughter got, go outside and white supremacists see this stuff on the news and they're reading this stuff. Oh, that's what they did. They called the police first. They didn't try to beat him up or come, come with them with a baseball bat or chase them or nothing. They just called the police first. Hmm. What do you think they're thinking in their heads? They're thinking food.